Comes the surprise movie of the year. Time says trouble to delivers. Yeah, what do you say? I don't get involved in these matters. A heartbreaking portrayal. I can't even make it. Just do something. Absolutely electric. <laughs> Travolta's just terrific. I promise you, it's gonna be better. John Travolta, Harry Belafonte, White Man's Burden, rated R. Starts Friday, December first at theaters everywhere. Hey, folks, we're back with another new episode of unfinished business television deep dive as always i am dev gallish your host and with me is uh, a andre joseph of aj evix productions i don't know if it's worth five dollars but it's pretty fucking bad yeah <laughs> that no truth is more true today and with us is special guest vashon Pionez of <laughs> Oh, uh, beautiful black field critic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my fake scratch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I'm um, yeah. Uh, thank you for having me, guys. It's been a minute. I think the last time yeah. I've been on here, over. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ancient times. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry. We don't have a better film to talk about. <laughs> 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 right. Um. We are going to be talking this episode about a little 90s movie called White Man's Burden, starring John Travolta, Harry oh. Belafonte, Kelly Lynch. Um, it, it's a film which imagines a world in which uh, Black and white characters have kind of switched roles, where the uh, Black characters are more the patriarchy and in power, and the whites are more the uh, poor, impoverished uh, characters. And in this film uh, of society comes a kind of a weird crime story where, where John Travolta is, you know, a factory worker who uh, does a favor for his boss making a delivery. And uh, he uh, looks and, uh, I guess, sees Harry Belafonte's wife naked and Harry Belafonte is very upset about this feeling like this guy is a peeper and wants him fired and John Travolta who's already in dire straits when it comes to finances uh, he uh, tries getting anything he can to get his job back to get uh, money to live off of and when he can't find any of that he has the genius idea of uh, kidnapping the boss basically to I guess hold him ransom and either try and get his job back or at least get some money out of it and we watch as everything goes wrong it seems throughout this film um this film I I'll tell my personal story of watching this film I remember this movie coming out and this was like right after John Travolta had all the heat from Pulp Fiction and he was signing all these big movie deals and it seemed like uh, this film was more done as a favor because Lawrence Bender produced it, um, who uh, produced uh, Pulp Fiction and was Quentin Tarantino's uh, executive producer at the time. And, you know, this movie came out along with Mad City at the time. And, I mean, it, it, it got, I guess, Oscar hopes because of John Travolta being in it. And a movie where Harry Belafonte seemingly came out of retirement to act in a film again. And I remember watching it and it was just like, it almost felt like somebody pulled a joke on you. Like maybe I'm watching the wrong edited scenes together because this film is just bad uh, because uh, John Travolta seems to have this, what he's going to call a black scent. And it just sounds like he's mentally slow. Um, you know, Oh, I'm trying to, like there's so much wrong with this movie. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to find the right words here. Um, it's kind of insulting. It's like this is a movie that kind of had a premise. Like uh, there was a HBO TV movie called Cosmic Slot, and it felt like this was one of those premises. And mm -hmm. instead of that, they more went this crime story to. 
that seemingly not make it racial, but even though there's nothing but racial overtones through this film. So it's like confusing exactly what are you trying to say. Plus, there are no other minorities in this movie. It's only black, white. There's no Hispanics. There's no Asians. And the writer-director of the film is Asian himself. So it was just a weird thing of what exactly are you trying to say? And it's no wonder why this film, after it came out, was hard to find or quickly forgotten or disowned. Um, Andre, uh, tell us your history with the film. Well, I remember it was at the height of John Travolta's big comeback after Pulp Fiction. And, it, you know, he was like Tina Turner in 1984. Everybody wanted him back and, you know, had all these big time projects waiting for him. So I remember HBO, because I guess they were co-producing the film, they were hyping up the shit out of this on their network. They were doing all the behind the scenes. They were, you know, showing all these interviews with John Travolta and Harry Belafonte and trying to make this, like you said, like this was going to be big time at the Oscars because it was going to be so hard hitting and so different. And it falls flat very fast and very quickly because one of the issues you have with this picture is you're trying to do this idea of the roles of the races being reversed and you're going through all the tropes of the white guy who's supposed to be the black person in this particular universe loses his job loses his house gets beat up by the cops nobody's willing to listen to him but it feels less of a racial thing and more like a class issue in this particular case. It seems like, you know, all the black folks are on the uppity side of life and all the white folks are white collar, blue collar trash. Uh, and basically like, you're just seeing the, the hardships more so than, oh, you're different because of the skin color deal. And it, and it gets a little confusing. And then in the midst of, doing the crime element of this story you're trying to follow these other side side plots such as harry belafonte's son wants to go out with this white girl and you know just stuff that didn't make a whole lot of sense to do and it just was like this guy Desmond kind of he probably had the right intentions but the execution is complete shit and that's why you can't find this movie because it's like literally offensive it's not on dvd Travolta never talks about it. You never hear about it in Harry Belafonte's obituary that he made this film. So that tells you a lot about how I think Hollywood was ready to embrace this thing and then they buried it after the fact. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not only should it have been buried, it should have been uh, someone stuck a knife or a stake in it and put it in sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and sadly, but, it was Tarantino who talked him into doing this shit. Yeah, it, yeah and I have my issues with him, too. But, you know, that's another thing. But let me tell you my little history on the film. I got to see this movie uh, when it came out in uh, well, 95. Uh, I was invited to a screening with my father at, excuse me, at American Film Institute. And uh, I remember going there and watching the movie now mind you you know uh <laughs> spike lee is is a filmmaker that i enjoy and admired and uh also i'm being laced with game by my cousins who taught me a lot about black history and, and things like that so going into the going into this movie you know I already have my guard up that I was getting ready to see some bullshit. And I remember uh, after the film was over, my father and I looked at each other, as well as the two other black students at AFI, and this uh, and, and looked over and, and kind of look of confusion and, and the response was rather lukewarm. And, you know, there was a, you know, kind of a, a feeling amongst um, other, uh, students there that weren't black that's oh man this we got it right and oh you kind of you know you touch you know um you uh i don't want to say tore the lid off racism but you know it, it was the quote unquote liberal white that enjoyed this movie while 
the black students as well as myself were looking like, you know, this movie was confused. I, I didn't like it. I feel it was very, it, for every stereotype that it was trying to break, it just reinforced a lot more. <laughs> you know, uh, not all black people are in the ghetto. One. And uh, as far as the patriarchy concern that Jeff made, uh, I don't think it's necessarily in terms of gender roles, but it's trying to play the white supremacist, like what if black people were in the position of white supremacy? Uh, so we, we, you know, and so, which is fascinating because <laughs> that's not true. Uh, <laughs> we are constantly fighting white supremacy. So, uh, you know, I look at, and, and as far as the class issue is concerned, yeah, you know, Trump people just, oh, it's not about race, it's about class, I understand something. It's going to be about race. We can always talk about, you know, it's going to be about money or rich, poor. No. When it comes down to black and white, it's going to be about race, gentlemen. So, it, so uh, not to go deep into that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I just remember being a little disappointed about by the film and um and you know never wanted to see it again i remember just laughing at john travolta's accent and here's the thing he does that a bit quite a bit and it's not just in this movie i can't think of something else where he, he does it in saturday night fever even though he's playing he's italian but it's it, it there you know uh uh it, it's Hell, it's a little bit in Broken Arrow. <laughs> it, you know, he tries, it tries to slip it and, and be cool. He tries to slip it in there too, you know. Um, so, but uh, I just remember that I didn't like the movie. And I kind of felt like it was a um, Twilight Zone episode stretched from, you know, a movie that could have been thirty minutes or, or short that should have been. 10, 15 minutes, possibly 30, stretched to an hour and a half. And, uh, you know, that's all I got to say <laughs> so much about uh, white man's burden. I mean, hell, the name alone, white man's burden. So what's the white man's burden in the movie? Oh, with black people? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a film that, uh, yeah, it, 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 I, I, you know, I haven't bothered watching, and uh, I have not watched. <laughs> okay, I tried <laughs> watch and just could not. But uh, you know, hey, yeah, you know, I don't blame you. Mm -hmm. Um, it, well, with this film, the problem is watching it. Uh, well, back in the day, it reminds <laughs> me of like more of the films John Travolta makes now for paychecks. You know, uh, mm -hmm. the acting style because. Also, he has a weird thing in his movies whenever he tries to curse, where it just seems like, I don't know, like he puts an accent to curse also in, in all of his movies. Right. It's it's over-exaggerated. <clears throat> and, and no, and he also tried to do it in Pulp Fiction, where he was like, <laughs> Marvin, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you believe in it? I forgot the line in there, but you know, you can tell that, you know, again, I'm just speculating, but the director <laughs> is probably saying, you know, hey, you know, you know, yeah, you know, try to, you know, you might probably try to do this, you know, accent or whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to indict Quentin, but, you know, or, or Desmond Nicado, but, you know, uh, you know, but they didn't fight against it. But it, it's just like, yeah, motherfucker. You know, he does it. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's hilarious, man. You know, uh, you know, it just kind of shows that, you know, when you're trying to deal with black and white um, in America, man, you know, you got this Japanese dude, you know, and no disrespect, not to say that, you know, people any, of any color can't write about black people, but the little nuances, the, you know, uh, what's affecting Black people, and especially if you're not dealing with Black people and you're not from culture, you're not going to get it right. And it, it seemed like uh, my man was drawn from a ton of stereotypes. He could think <laughs> of 
you can kind of tell when a person, because I was just thinking about this as I'm getting ready to jump subject a little bit. I was watching, uh, because I'm getting ready to record uh, uh, Last Dragon episode, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so when you listen to the dialogue in that movie or you listen to White Man's Burden, you can tell when someone's interaction with Black people stops. It's like it stops at a certain time period. So listen to the 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 screenwriter for Last Dragon. He stated that, well, you know, uh, back in 1983, you know, I went to this, you know, uh, Bruce Lee and the Dragon, you know, kind of 10 year anniversary. And I was seeing all these, you know, kids of different backgrounds, different nationalities you know, uh, seeing this movie and I said, well, there's a story here. So when you listen to the dialogue of Last Dragon, it sounds very 70s. Like -hmm. he just pulled all the dialogue that from the 1970s that he could think of that we're not even using in 85. (laughs) (laughs) So here's a movie that's presented in 1985 feels like 1975. So, (laughs) so it's like, you know, the slangs and everything and, and the stereotypes have been somewhat dated. And so when you look at White Man's Burden and those involved, you can tell they have not interacted with Black people <laughs> in quite <laughs> time. And it shows, so it's like, oh, well, you know, we need to get, you know, how do we get some dialogue in here to feel authentic? And they had no one there. You know, um, and so that that's my take on uh white man's burden uh it's it's an interesting experiment you know uh it's an interesting idea i just don't think it was uh properly executed it is made by someone who you know especially trying to write from uh i don't well actually i don't know whose perspective the movie write from was he was he trying to write from a black perspective Uh, i don't know you know um, you or your father have an interaction with him after this movie yeah, uh, you know, we had a Q and A, and um, I forgot what was asked. One, he he's like, "Oh, damn, Chad, what you doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, middle school, so they had, I believe, some run in at one point many moons ago, but um, I forgot what my father asked. But it kind of was like a a back and forth uh, between my father as well as Desmond Nicano. Uh, and uh, it, yeah, it, it, that was it. But it was just like, this movie, it's been really all that. And, you know, it was kind of a disappointment. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? So, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a, uh, it's it's an it's a nice try. It's it, it definitely tried for something that uh, you know, and not to say that it couldn't. It, it this is a bad, okay, like you said, costume side. What if this story would had been in Reggie Hudlin's hands or mm-hmm. John's hands? What would we have? I think we have something different. You I know? think you would have had more subtlety and right. definitely more authentic experiences that you can reverse very easily because this movie. There's nobody really sympathetic. Like Harry yeah. Belafonte is pretty much he's up in the air and yeah. doesn't really like feel sympathetic till the end when he wants to give the money to Kelly Lynch. But even then it feels like he's just pandering. And then Travolta, you know, he his character's already a screw up, but at the same time, you look at him, you look at Kelly Lynch they look totally miscast in this movie. I, I would not pick them as, you know, right. this downwritten uh, white couple in this, you know, right. re- race reverse society. You know, right. there's far better actors now that I think can pull that off very easily and not have to force an accent. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 I mean, you know, uh, I think that, you know, much respect to John Travolta, but it was just the, the the I think it, the the like you said uh, it's subtle it, there's nothing subtle about it it's so trying to hammer in you know uh, a, a message and it's just like uh, I thought you know at some point Kenan and our lands will pop out message <laughs> it's like you know, you know it's like you get it you know what I mean but 
um it was just like um yeah um yeah as i as i draw a blank <laughs> you know um and like i said before it, it i think had it been a cosmic slop episode had it been shorter uh it would have been interesting maybe as a short novel i mean who knows you know uh something like that uh to explore that but as far as film goes um i didn't uh didn't particularly uh care for the movie you know but much respect to the black actors and actresses that got work and got paid do you think janet hubert i seen you in there uh she was in there right well, well Margaret Avery was in it and Bumper okay. Robinson. I thought, okay, yeah, Margaret Avery, she was in it, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, was, my bad. she was the wife. I thought, right. See, gentlemen, I, I, cats, I'm, 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 it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while getting my black people yeah. mixed up. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, much respect to Margaret Avery and uh, Ms. Janet Hubert, but I, I thought I could have sworn she was uh, in, in the film. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, you know, uh, it was, yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> something. It was interesting. It was an interesting movie. What, you know, what, whatever happened to Desmond Nakano? <laughs> no, no. Did you do like one other movie after this, and then pretty much you don't hear about him anymore. Yeah, I remember, you know, I'm he, American Me, and uh, well, he was one of the writers for that, and you know, I think uh, Last Exit to Brooklyn he wrote in the uh, movie adaptation. And yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But it didn't hurt Travolta. I mean, you know, he had Broken Arrow a year later and then he was still good to go for a little while. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah, White Man's Burden. Thumbs down, you know, again, <laughs> I, I will give it an A for effort, but, you know, it, it was it was a movie that, um, yeah, uh, it, it tried, it swung for the fences, and it missed, but uh, I, I would say uh, go re- revisit your Spike Lee's, <laughs> go, vi- uh, I would, uh, hell, uh, visit some of uh, early uh, Melvin Van Peebles, look at three, the story of the three-day pass. If you want to talk, if you want to talk about uh, race relations in this country, uh, watermelon man, what? Well, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I would, yeah, watermelon man is good, cool, but I would say story of three day pass is better, in my yeah. opinion. You know, it's it's a much you know better, well made film than Watermelon Man. You know, you get to see, you know, kind of that you know that French New Wave shit that everybody was on sixties and. You know, and it just shows that uh, it's, it's interesting about that film. I'm kind of jumping off, but and I don't want to ruin it for those who haven't seen it. But it's a way that you know, uh, towards the end, you know, Melvin Peebles has a way of punching the gut when you least expect. And you go, "Oh, damn!" And, and it's done in a cool way. There's no anger about it, no nothing. It's just like how cool the brother plays it, mm-hmm. right? And so. Uh, so if you uh, so that's my recommendation. Story of a Three Day Pass, you know uh, another film that's good, but uh, something uh, Jules Dassin was it uh, uh, Uptight. That's another good movie you should check out if you haven't seen it. Um, hell, I think they sell it for five bucks on uh, <laughs> on Voodoo right now. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so you know, um, yeah, but White Man's Burden is a movie that you. If unless you're just bored and and, and I mean just, I, I, you ain't got nothing to do. If someone <laughs> said you got you know watching paint dry or white man's burden, <laughs> maybe you might want to see white man's burden. But you know it, it, it's like it's it's you know it's not a, a rush out to go see this movie. It's kind of a uh, it's a it's a bit of a disappointment gentlemen take it away this is your show i'm talking yeah i i I not only uh not recommend it but in your (laughs) worlds of robert townsend i give it two middle fingers (laughs) (laughs) um yeah i can't really think of any reason you would need to watch it unless Mm. you're like some weird john travolta completist (laughs) you know um but other than that you can pretty much skip it this isn't 
anything that really needs to be seen. Um, I think Vashon was nicer than both of us with it, with the A for effort. I'm just like, nah, you don't really. <laughs> there, there was no reason for this to be made. You, you know, <laughs> my thing is, and, and I think, you know, kind of goes into kind of, for those who are film buffs, it kind of goes into the discussion now. You know, uh, me and Andre have talked extensively about movies all the time and filmmakers. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong with a filmmaker trying to swing for the fences, you know, and, and, and miss. At least he tried, you know, and I think for right now, a lot of filmmakers, man, uh, a lot of don't really want to have a perspective on anything. It's just like a lot of these movies are just like, you know, pre-made flicks just with people with them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, uh, so I think I'll give him some props for that. For okay. trying. Right, you know, uh, but all in all, it's not a movie that, you know, uh, being a black person, you gentlemen being black, is not something that pertains to us. It's, this is, you know, again, this is fantasy. You know? <laughs> Oh, you know, we, you know, so you know, we know what we deal with when we, once we step outside our door. You know, this I just look at this like, okay, you know, you know, you try, but you know, um, it's spoken from a person who is not of our culture. So, um, but yeah, so <laughs> nice try, not nice try, <laughs> nice try, Desmond. <laughs> so, yeah. Jeff, take it away, man. I mean, sure. Oh, well, hey, I, I don't really have too much to say about this movie. I'm just like, right. hey, not, didn't like it. <laughs> nope. Um, right. so, go ahead. Good. No, go go oh, no. Uh, I was going to just wrap it up <laughs> in case anybody oh. else has well, anything else to say about it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, because I'm about to say we can talk about other movies that reminds us of more if you guys want. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, I mean, you know, uh, again, uh, it's just uh, you know, at the, you know, trying to repeat myself, but uh, I guess I'm getting ready to repeat myself. <laughs> you know, it, it's a nice try. You know, uh, you know, Devin took a shot. Uh, it, 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 you know, the whole flip, the flipping of uh, uh, race uh, situations, uh, but in the end, uh, it was just an incompetent made movie. <laughs> it was just like, eh, okay, this was best left as a episode of possibly Twilight Zone, or you know, hell, would a Black Mirror get a hold of it? Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah. So that's my take on it. Yeah, it's 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 like an unfunny sitcom that tries to be dramatic and send a message. <laughs> is that's what I'd say? And right. Well, I, <laughs> white man's burden. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, any final words on uh, white man's burden? Yeah, fuck this movie. <laughs> okay. okay so that ends our business for this week but as you know we always have unfinished business and we want to thank Vashon Kionez for being a guest on our show again uh, you know mm -hmm. special guest and yeah. hope to have him on we definitely have to have a broken arrow discussion now oh. <laughs> so we can uh, <laughs> climb the depths of that right, <laughs> right. love that um, and Bashan, where could people find you and your work? <laughs> well, you know, uh, you can find me on Spotify. You can find <laughs> me on IG, Fear of a Black Film Critic, P.O.D. Pod, right, uh, on IG. But mostly we're on Spotify. You know, I know I keep telling people on my show that, yeah, I'm with uh, iTunes, Amazon, I I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually I will. I'll, I'll get there, you know. So be it my good brother fully love. We'll we'll hit all platforms. And uh, you know, hopefully, man, I you know, I hope people you know actually 
been getting some good responses. I'm, you know, I've, you know, people have been interacting and, you know, saying they enjoy the vibe, and uh, I, I appreciate that. So thank you to all the listeners out there. You know, because sometimes you, you know, doing these shows, man, you get a, you you start to wonder, like, man, is anyone out there really listening? Or you know, but <laughs> then you get on your get on your page, and then you see some comments. You know, you know, you know, people are interacting and saying, "Hey, man, good job." You know, we like this, and I'm like, okay, you know, okay, I don't think we, we, you know, we got a little something, and so, uh, you know, but hey, thank you for those who tune in and listen to me and fully love our crazy selves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> we highly recommend it too. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Of course, uh the, the the band the cut master who cuts much faster, Andre is our editor. So you know he gets the uh exclusive before you know it, hey Vashon, um I was kind of wondering do you want to cut here? <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, I was like, yeah, man, yeah, cut, yeah, cut that part out, you know. So, um, <laughs> I'm very appreciative of, of it, mm-hmm. our, our work. But thank you, Spotify. That's that's it. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. You know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this week we bid you guys adieu and stay away from White Man's Burden, the movie. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> right. If you like this review. Please be sure to like and hit subscribe to be alerted to new episodes in the future.